Hello class, this video is a lesson about deriv uh, derivative standard EvoPop.2 or evolutions of populations in the second standard and this is how to tell if a population is evolving so other than by looking at it um, you know this one's the finch you know mathematically we're looking at um, we talked about alleles last time how can you tell if a population is evolving so we're going to talk about it from a mathematical perspective first some definitions that you need to know um, population genetics, uh, that means it's a study of genetics um, of a population, but over a certain amount of time. Population in general, if you remember from the previous lesson, we're talking about a group of individuals, the same species, that live in the same area and interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So a population is um, everybody in the same location and they're all the same species. This is uh, another, some more definitions. A gene pool all the alleles for all genes and all the members of the population. So taking basically all the possibilities, all the possible genes and alleles for the genes. So for example, um, if we were just, what if the whole population of the human race only had black and red hair? That would be all the alleles. In real life, um, all the alleles would be brown, blonde, um, black, white. I mean, they're talking about all the alleles for genes. That's the gene pool, all, the whole possibilities. Diploid species, you may have heard this in bio the first time you took it, diploid, D-I, the prefix meaning two. Um, diploid species mean they have two alleles for a gene. Humans are diploid species, we have two alleles for each gene. Homozygous, homo meaning the same, so that means the two alleles are the same. Or heterozygous meaning the two alleles are different. So that for humans, we are diploid species, we either have our alleles the same, like from both parents, the exact same allele, or they're different, hetero. A fixed allele, though, however, that means all members of our population only have one allele for a particular trait. So that's just like similar to saying in my previous video, um, what if everybody only had black hair? That's we only have one allele for a particular trait, like hair color. The more fixed alleles a population has, that means there's less diversity, which makes sense. Like if you only have one possibility, then there's less diversity. To other, to, in order to understand this, we use something called the Hardy-Weinberg theorem, and this is what the majority of this standard is about. The allele and genotype frequencies of a population will remain constant from generation to generation. So the frequencies of a population, like you know, the, for Asians, like I'm guessing the frequency of black hair is very high, um, will remain constant unless they're acted upon by forces other than Mendelian segregation and recombination of alleles. So this means as long as we don't mess it up or as long as we don't do anything about it, um, the normal course of genetics and production of offspring will repeat the same frequency every single generation. So equilibrium is another important uh, word that you'll need to know is that these allele and genotype frequencies, they remain constant. So every generation, every kid has the exact same possibility of getting these um, genes. So for you to reach this equilibrium, this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, you have to meet five particular conditions. That means there's no mutations, uh, random mating, which means anyone can possibly produce offspring, no natural selection, meaning there's no possibility or remember the beaks and the finches, we, we, we have nothing like that. We have to have a very, very, very large population size, not a small one, and no gene flow, meaning again, there's no outside force affecting the genetics. If at least one of these conditions is not met, then the population is evolving. So in reverse, if there's mutations or enforcing mating or there's natural selection or of a small population size, that means the population is evolving. Here are the mathematics behind this. Here are the principles. So thinking about a gene with two alleles, and we'll talk about an example, we will label them P and Q. P represents the probability or the frequency of the dominant allele, and Q represents the recessive allele. So another thing, way to think about this is think of eye color. Um, I have dark eyes. Um, I might, I don't know, my genetics, I might have the recessive gene for like blue eyes, but I, I um, express the dominant allele, okay? So I might have a black allele and a blue allele for my, or a brown, la la, a dark allele for my eyes and a blue one, but I only have, or I only express the dark one. So in a gene pool, or in general for a population, the frequency of the dominant plus the frequency of the recessive equals one according to Hardy-Weinberg. Um, and those of you that can understand the algebra behind this, that also one minus the dominant gives me the recessive, or one minus the recessive gives me the probability for the dominant. 
if I'm given a genotypic frequency, so in this last slide, um, I'm just talking about just the allele, just A and just uppercase A and just lowercase A. If you're given the genotype, which is in a diploid, you know, there's remember there's two alleles per gene, so dominant and dominant, or dominant recessive, or recessive recessive. There's only you know three possibilities for a diploid uh, species. Then I'm going to use this formula. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. This is also uh, indicative of Hardy-Weinberg. P squared represents the homozygous dominant. The PQ represents the heterozygous. And Q squared represents the recessive. So adding up all the dominants, all the recessives, and all the mixed or the hetero, they should all equal 1 if I'm in equilibrium. Or if there's no evolution going on, this equation should be true. So here's an example. Think of a flower. Um, some flowers have the um, a diploid, and they have essentially for color they have two alleles, red and white. So that's why I have CR and CW. So I have the possibility of red and white. So if a male with sperm has a allele for red and white, and a female has also red and white, here are the here are the frequencies or possibilities that we may have. In this particular flower um, population, the frequency is 80% red and 20% white. So for the most part, 80% um, of the time these flowers will come out red. Okay? And 20% of the time it will express white. Now when these from the sperm merge with these from the eggs, we could have flowers of different offspring. Say for example the sperm um, with a red allele matches with a red or merges with a red allele from the egg. Oops, sorry. That means I will get a red flower. If the white from the sperm merges with the red from the eggs, I start to get a pinkish one. Same thing with the red from the sperm and the white from eggs, I also get a pinkish one. And then if by I get the recessive allele, you know, they do have it, but it's very rare. Twenty percent of the white of the sperm and twenty percent of the time from the eggs, I will get a white flower. So in the other, in talking about the other percentages, so 64% of the time I will get a red flower. 32% of the time I will get a pink flower. And 4% of the time, a very, very rare opportunity, I will get a white flower. So here is essentially that same graph or same charts, but sort of explained in a different way. So long story short, um, everything I already explained, I have a dominant color, I have a recessive color. This happens 80% of the time. This is given to you 80% of the time, 20% of the time. And this will give me um, the relative percentage or likelihood or frequency of getting these colors. So here are the strategies, and this is something that you might want to circle or asterisk on your notes. Uh, on your notes. If you have the genotypes, genotypes are the AA, uh, A lowercase a, lowercase AA. Calculate the P and Q, the frequency, by just adding up all the A and capital A and lowercase a alleles. If you know the phenotypes, which is you know just A and, and, and capital A, then use AA to find Q squared, and then find Q, and you could find out P. Okay, and again, some of this doesn't make sense until we do some examples. And then, if you want to find out if a population is evolving, calculate P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared. If this equals 1, you're in equilibrium. If it does not equal 1, then you are, or the population is, evolving. Okay. So we only have, um, on your notes I put 2, but we're going to just do one sample problem. We'll also do more sample problems in class. So let's say for example we have this scarlet tiger moth, and we collect them all, and we check out their allele and genotype frequencies, or we're trying to calculate their allele and genotype frequencies for a population of 1,612 moths. When we collect them, we found that 1,469 have a double dominant um, or two dominant alleles. 138 of them had a dominant allele and a recessive allele, and a very, very few, um, five, had two recessives. Your question is, can you find the allele frequency of the dominant and the recessive? And what is the frequency for these genotypic frequencies? All right, and some of you may be confused. First thing you're going to do is you notice that we collected 1,612 moths, correct? 
So to find the genotypic frequencies, I'll do this one first. All I have to do is take how many I caught and divide by, oops, and divide by how many there are total. So if I want to know how many dominant, you know, two dominant, um, what's the frequency for it? Remember, there was 1469 AAs and there were 1612 total. So it's 1469 divided by 1612. And if I put it into a calculator, I'm going to get 0.911. I'll just do three decimal points. Like so. Oh, sorry, 0.911. Okay, so far? I'll do the exact same thing with the, uh, the heterozygous one, a dominant and a recessive. There's 138 of them, and there's 1612 moths. So 138 divided by um, 1612. And I get, when I put that in a calculator, I will get 0.086. And then the last one, the recessive, I only have 5, so I will do 5 divided by 1612, and this should be a very small number, I will get 0 0.003. Those are the genotypic frequencies. Allele frequencies, I, I did the bottom one first, I think it would make more sense, is um, how much, how frequent, or what is the probability that I have the A um, expressed and the recessive, the dominant and the recessive expressed. The dominant is expressed in these two cases. Okay, so in this one, if I have two dominants, I still get the dominant. This one, I have a dominant and recessive, I still express the dominant. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two. If I add them, I'm going to get 1607. And for the recessive, I only get five. Only five of them express the recessive gene. So to figure out the frequency here, I'll do the exact same thing I did the last one. There's 1612, oops, there's 1612 total. So I'll just divide by 1612. And I will get uh, 0.997. And in this next one, the recessive, there was only five that expressed it. I'll divide that by 1612. And then if you remember from the bottom right here, I already calculated it, 0 0.003. So it is very uh, simple. It's not like algebra. It's not calculus to calculate the frequencies. You take the amount, you, ah, you take the amounts that you have and divide it by the amount total of the whole population. In these two cases, I looked at how many of the uh, express the dominance, which were these two, and divided by the total. And then for lowercase a, there was only these ones that express it and divided by the total. Genotypic frequencies, remember genotypes are the whole thing, so the two um, alleles together. I just took 1469 divided by the total, I took 138 divided by the total, and took 5 and divided by the total. This is how you figure out um, these frequencies. I know it's tough to understand, but um, again, we'll go over some more practice problems in class. Um, if you have any difficulty, you're gonna remember you're gonna put the questions in the um, after you watch this video, the questions afterwards, and I'll see you guys in class. Take care.